Taya Chaksu Umri Janathas, my Sri Guru Vena Maha, Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, <coughs> Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishi Sasunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine, Panchakalpataru Vizja, Kripa Sindhu Vajja, Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktarinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hmm. There's a beautiful series of verses in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the Antya Lila, where uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself uh, is speaking uh, about, I believe it's Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it might also be Rupa Goswami describing uh, the quality of a person who exhibits Vaishnav etiquette. It's a series of three verses, and they're right at the beginning of the chapter. Unfortunately, I'd have to do some research to locate the particular verses. But the, ex the essence of the verses is that. Uh, uh, Vaishnav etiquette is the ornament of a devotee. <laughs> ornament means, to give you an example of how we look at ornament, a person might be dressed up, say a lady is dressed up very nicely, and then, but she has a beautiful brooch or necklace that is uh, very colorful, very valuable, and it's outstanding. So people will notice that because it is such an outstanding part of her dress. Uh, again, maybe another example would be a man is wearing uh, a nice suit and tie, but he has a he has a flower coming out of his lapel. So that flower becomes his ornament. People will notice the flower, and they're they're happy to see that. So a Vaishnav etiquette means is, is that the characteristic and behavior of a devotee is the etiquette of a Vaishnava, and it's their outstanding quality. To know the scriptures is important, but behavior is more important than knowledge of scripture. Um, when you combine both of them to, together, you have what is the, the ideal personality. So we have the example of Srila Haridas Thakur was also spoken to by Sanatana Goswami. And he said, some people preach, but their behavior is not, what we say, up to, up to standard. And some people, they don't preach, but they behave very well. But you are the best of all personalities because you are preaching and your behavior is ideal. So when we combine both of them together, we see that it's important. Now, if you had to compare the two, behavior and um, what we say, having knowledge, you'll see that behavior is more outstanding because behavior itself speaks. And by the etiquette, and like Srila Prabhupada was asked, how can you tell a Vaishnava and Prabhupada's response was, he is a perfect gentleman. He, she is a perfect lady. In other words, they give respects to all. So this is the basic principle of Vaishnava etiquette, is to give respects to other living entities. And what is that respect? And that is also uh, illustrated by one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So let's turn to that verse. It's the fourth canto, 
It's chapter number eight. It's verse number 34. And this is how etiquette is given according to position or situation. 4, 834. Gunadikam budam lipsed akru krosam gunadamat. Maitrim samanad anvitschan natapar abidud yate. Translation. Every man should act like this. When he meets a person more qualified than himself, he should be very pleased. When he meets someone less qualified than himself, he should be compassionate towards him. And when he meets someone equal to himself, he should make friendship with him. In this way, one is never affected by the threefold miseries of this material world. So take note of that last sentence. By following the behavior as given in this verse, the consequence is in this way, one is never affected by the threefold miseries of this world, which are very, very strong and prominent. Purport. Generally, when we find someone more qualified than this, ourselves, we become envious of him. When we find someone less qualified, we deride him. And when we find someone equal, we become very proud of our activities. These are the causes of all material tribulations. The great sage Narada therefore advised that devotees should act perfectly. Instead of being envious of a more qualified man, one should be jolly to receive him. Instead of being oppressive to a less qualified man, one should be compassionate towards him just to raise him to the proper standard. And one meets an equal instead of being proud of one's activities before him, one should treat him as a friend. One should also have compassion for people in general who are suffering due to forgetfulness of Krishna. These important functions will make one happy. Go down further. Within this material world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we get a little insight of the behavior and the consciousness that exhibits that particular behavior in relationships with people who are, we might say, equal. We call them peers, seniors, and juniors, like that. So here, this is, uh, and we see the contrary here. Especially if two people have the same activity or the same occupation, and one is more qualified and is getting more, um, what we say, attention and more benefits. The other person may have a tendency to become envious of them. And then when something happens to that person who is more senior, and that person feels happy. That is enviousness. Or sometimes it becomes so much so that a person will try to pull down a, another person uh, in order to make themselves look a little better or just out of spite or envy, just to show their dissatisfaction that someone is more qualified to them. So this goes on in the material world. The material world is the basic principle of material existence is enviousness. This is the foundation by which all material energy moves. And how is that understood? Well, we fall from the spiritual world because of our enviousness of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Krishna is the center in the spiritual world and all living entities surround Krishna in transcendental loving service. But if a living entity somehow feels unhappy to see Krishna being the center and wants to be the center themselves, that, that mentality will push one to fall into the material world. So Prabhupada said, we, we fall because of enviousness of Krishna 
And when we come here in the material world, we carry that same mood towards each other like that. Sometimes we see even if a husband, if a, a husband, if a wife is more advanced than the husband spiritually, sometimes the husband will feel slighted or feel a little bit unhappy because of that. And that is also a symptom of envy. So therefore, as it says here, when one meets one more qualified than themselves, they should feel happy and very jolly, as Prabhupada said, to receive such a person. And if that person is getting uh, more attention or more benefits, that person thinks, oh, so wonderful. That person is actually very qualified and therefore, um, I should also try to increase my devotional service or, or my qualifications also. Now, there is envy in the spiritual world that is, benefit, that, is, that is bona fide. What is that bona fide envy? Prabhupada speaks about that. He says that the gopis, the one gopi will see how another gopi is serving Krishna so nicely and she'll think, oh, wow, she's serving Krishna so nicely. I want to serve Krishna like her. Or maybe I want to serve Krishna better than her. There is no mean spirit. There's no enmity. There's no unhappiness there. There is only the inspiration to increase one's devotional service. And who benefits? Krishna. <laughs> So sometimes we get into competition to try to increase the quality of our devotional service or the quantity, not in a way just to be better than someone, but in a way to give Krishna more pleasure like that. And whoever, so we use a, a cliche, whoever wins, whoever is the best, everyone feels happy. Oh, you are the best. Congratulations. You served Krishna so nicely. So there is never any enmity, envy, or mean-spirited, and there's no jealousy either. Jealousy is somewhat similar to enviousness, but it's directed towards oneself. Jealousy means that I'm so unqualified, and they're so qualified, and I don't feel happy about myself. <laughs> That's jealousy. That's it's more or less turned inward. And envy more or less turns itself outward. So here, when we see this, this goes on in the material world all the time. The whole material world is motivated by this, this, this bad quality of envy. So as Prabhupada said, the difference between material and spiritual is that one who is non-envious, is, is on the spiritual platform and one who is envious is on the material platform. There's such a clear distinction based on this quality. So um, therefore one should be satisfied whatever situation one is in and should always be happy to see how, when someone is more advanced, when someone is doing wonderful service, the devotee thinks, wow, that's so nice. That person is making nice advancement. And it's not something that we should feel unhappy about. Now, this envy goes deep. And even though we try to act externally in, in the right way, and sometimes even within our hearts and minds, we still carry that envy in a subtle way. And it comes out in different situations. So one should practice it, learning to be satisfied with what Krishna gives you and take time to glorify the devotees. It's important to glorify the devotees, not simply in order to perform a function, but to actually um, understand that devotees are glorifiable because they have taken shelter of Krishna and devotional service. That is very rare. The second thing here is that one should be compassionate towards someone who is less qualified. The contrary is that people, well, feel good because they're better than someone else. So, and uh, 
and in the material world, they like to push people down instead of being compassionate, concerned, try to raise them up or doing, doing something that would benefit them. They feel good that they're benefited and they also derive and criticize people who are in a lesser position. This goes on all the time, <laughs> all the time. Deriding people, uh, neglecting people, marginalizing, ma marginalizing people in the lower position and feeling envious towards people in a better position, either materially or spiritually. Uh, so one should be compassionate and think. And that's why preaching is a way to uh, show compassion to the fallen souls who are suffering in this material world. So we have our own Krishna consciousness, but we're not satisfied simply by our own Krishna consciousness. We feel we want to help others become Krishna conscious also. We want to share the good fortune that we have received by giving others an opportunity to come forward in their spiritual life. So that is the compassionate mood for those who are less qualified. And when one meets one equal, um, we, uh, we always, uh, when, you're, when, when you're with equals, you're always telling your friend how wonderful you are. Did you know what I did? Did you know? Did you know this? Did you know this about me? So you want to make your friend feel good that they have a friend like you. <laughs> That's the negative part of this um, equality, that one places themselves in a situation to try to impress those who are on an equal level, just to let them know how fortunate it is they are to have such a friend. <laughs> And that's done in a subtle way a lot of times. We brag about our achievements. We brag about our uh, accomplishments. We brag about our positions just to impress others about who we are and what we have achieved. But uh, friendship for equals means to assist each other in Krishna consciousness to work together, associate with together, and to help each other in Krishna consciousness. It's about the other person. It's about serving the other person. And that's, that's real friendship. And being there for another person whenever there is a time of need or just in general, that's real friendship. Uh, for every all of these things are being mentioned here. There's no personal motivation. The personal the motivation is for devotional service, with a desire to please Krishna, with a desire to please the the other person that is engaged also in devotional service. So if we study this verse and the characteristics that's mentioned here. And what is the result? The threefold miseries. What are the threefold miseries? Miseries of the body and mind, miseries of all other living entities, miseries of higher powers. These are called kleshas. These are built into the material world. They are everywhere. But this verse is not some eulogy. It says if, we, if one follows what is written above, then one is never it's interesting. It's not said in this way one is, uh, doesn't say not affected, it says never affected by the threefold miseries of this material world. Well, that's how powerful Vaishnav etiquette is when it's applied in the way that it's meant to be. And the essence of Vaishnav etiquette is to try to see that all other living entities are, have Krishna in their heart. They are very dear to Krishna. So if we have an opportunity to serve another person and please that person by our service, because they are dear to Krishna, that is great service to Krishna also, along with serving that living entity. And the principle that allows us to live, and this was illustrated by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, 
he says, somehow or other, I go on in this, in this world because I give respects to uh, all living entities. Now, when you think about that statement, you might consider, well, some people are not respectable. Yes, that's true. Their qualities and characteristics and their behavior is maybe abominable. But still, what is that respect we give that they are Krishna's part and parcel? So you may not associate with such living entities, but you recognize them for who they are. They're Krishna's part and parcel. They may be misled. They may have bad association. They may be doing the wrong things. So you respect them in the sense that if you can serve them, but to help them, that's good. If you can't, then better not to find fault or, you know, look for ways to make yourself feel good that you think you're better than such persons. Hmm. So, and it comes back down to that basic principle as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Vidya Vanaya Sampane Brahmani Gavi Hastani Suni Chaiva Swapake Cha Panditat Samadarshanaha. So turn to that verse, it's 518 in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, it's a very important verse. <laughs> yeah, the humble sage, by virtue of true knowledge, there's the point, sees with equal advantage a learned and gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, outcast. And you can see there's such a distinction in bodily uh, designations here, all the way from a gentle Brahman to an outcast dog eater. But he sees equal vision. Why? What does he see? He sees Krishna within the heart. He sees that that living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. And Prabhupada says, the Krishna conscious person has full knowledge of this and therefore he is truly learned as equal vision. <laughs> so, yeah. And Krishna, Paramatma, sits in the heart of all living entities. Therefore, knowing that, one does not cause any discomfort or any harm to any living entity, knowing Krishna is in the heart of that living entity. Okay. So these are a few of the many, many points on Vaishnava etiquette. The basic principle is to give respects to everyone accordingly. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for uh, uh, explaining so nicely. Thank you so much. Uh, the devotees, if you have any questions or comments uh, or realizations, please share. Thank you. This is a very hot topic because <laughs> <It's too nice. laughs> there are so many dynamics in relationships that warrant clarification. So in order to do that, therefore, there must be questions. I just gave a general overview of the principles of Vaishnav culture and etiquette. And I didn't even cover all of them. I covered a few of them. But we see that in when we come right down to day-to-day -day relationships, we find there are certain dynamics that need to be clarified in order for us to understand how to act and think in, in each and every situation. Ms. Guru Maharaj, yes. Sri Devi Mataji, you raised your hand. You can go ahead, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, dear Guru Maharaj, for this uh, very important topic and explaining it at such a uh, at such length for us. Uh, I have a question, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances on glories to Srila Prabhupada, our to your divine lotus feet. I, I was thinking a little bit about people who are in a position of having to guide, correct, um, just be like spiritual mentors to others. And sometimes they may have to be firm uh, with a devotee or or even chastise a devotee. And uh, at that time, the devotee 
who who we, we may consider this is like our child and we need to correct them but they may get very offended and they may not see it uh the spirit with which it's it's being done so in such cases what we, what we can do to mitigate that uh, offense that that devotee is feeling well there may not be an offense first of all the most important point is what is the relationship between the person and the person that is being reprimanded or chastised if that's an established relationship in other words if the guru is chastising the disciple or correcting the disciple if the teacher is correcting or disciplining the student if the parent is correcting or disciplining their children each one of these persons are situated as part of their service to the, those the living entity mm -hmm. that has to be there that's service that's not wrong activity if it's done in the proper way in other words one has to be sensitive to see how to deliver the correction or the chastisement and not from a position of disturbances right in other words yeah mm -hmm. if i'm disturbed and you're disturbing me then my disturbance will come back at you and in the way i act towards you that's wrong i have to be concerned that what you're acting wrongly for and what i'm saying is for your benefit not because i'm simply because i'm disturbed because of what you're doing right yeah yeah so that has to be there and the relationship has to be there if the relationship is there that's the foundation which allows people to make these corrections or reprimands that are required. But then again, how to do it, you have to, one has to be sensitive to see how per persons will take it. You know? hmm. Sometimes you have to get really strong to make the point and get the result. And sometimes you can be sweet and very carefully choose chosen words. You have to see how best to do that. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. That's very reassuring. And that helps to understand how to conduct oneself in such situation. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, following up that question, so uh, when we are leading uh, some services, like uh, suppose uh, we are seeing other devotees, uh, uh, services and uh, when we are in a position when suppose I am in a position that where I am going to lead some devotees at the time uh, in order to uh, to be the work done properly um, I must be I think that I must be a little strict uh, that uh, the, this particular task should be done by this time like that so if I am very strong or if I am very lenient uh, so the the things are going here and there and uh, devotees are taking it like an offense so and also even though we have a good relationship from the beginning but uh, whatever i'm saying um, they are not taking it in the right uh, thing right mood or uh, even though i'm not trying to uh, demean them or down, take them down then, or, if you if you're seeing that while it's happening you should try to adjust and see if there's another way to say the same thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You observe how how it's being received while it's being received. And you can tell, and then you see, oh, it's the person's becoming disturbed or not hearing what you say. A lot of times when people are doing the wrong thing, they can't hear what needs to be heard. When people get caught up in their own emotions and their own ways of doing things and sometimes even the best instructions with given in the most compassionate way don't work <laughs> depends on how much a person is attached to doing what they're doing or acting in the way they're acting so there's so much dynamics there so we have one has to be sensitive we know i'm sure the Prabhupada, he also he would sometimes apparently get very angry but his anger was never something that was that controlled him. He used that anger to simply uh, 
make a point in such a way that it was strongly delivered. And uh, there was an incident where he would he asked one 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 of his leading preachers. This was way back in the early days of Krishna consciousness. Um, they asked a question. He asked the question. He said, you know, the Christians say that, you know, um, I forgot. He was quoting the Christians uh, to say that uh, God is, um, I don't know, I can't remember the question. But uh, Prabhupada immediately said, you know, you're out there preaching and, you're, and, and you don't read my books. The answer is in my books. Why don't you read my books? Why are you asking me that question? <laughs> so Prabhupada really went really strong on this person for 20 minutes. And the poor person was just like sinking down into his chair. He was like a puddle on the floor, you know. <laughs> But, but Prabhupada didn't let up. So he wanted to make a point that, yeah. So in other times, when someone, you know, showed some ignorance or did something wrong, he was very, very, you know, kind and careful. So you have to see the situation and understand how to deliver the message if it's required. And in some cases, you find this is also a consideration. It's not a rule. And that is that one says, sometimes one should do nothing in the situation and then wait for the right time to deliver a little message. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's been so it, it really takes learning how to develop interpersonal relationships based on our, our experiences in life. But the idea is to get the message across if it's required. People do disturb us and we get disturbed by other people. How we respond to that is a difference between success and failure. Something went wrong. No, Guru Maharaj, my phone. Uh, so even um, I'm learning in this, Guru Maharaj, because it's all new for me. Uh, so, um, yeah, even I'm making small, small mistakes and I'm learning from them. Um, but in the meanwhile, I feel, I feel uh, um, I'm afraid that I'm uh, hurting other people, other devotees. Well, so, don't, you have to be patient. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm. When you're, uh, when you're, when you're guiding your children, you realize patience is required <laughs> because they don't always somehow get it right away. <laughs> when you, it has to be done with other people also. Sometimes patience has to be part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're preaching, we learn that also. A lot of times we deliver a particular message and we're hoping people get it. But then we also understand they may not get it when it's delivered, but they may get it in due course of time when the situation is, wa is, is, is wanted. In other words, when something happens in their life, then they start to remember what they heard. And then they are more, more attuned to or more open to accept the instruction of the guidance. So just be patient. Don't be impatient with people if that's your position to guide them. Yes, There's a nice verse. Um, yeah, maybe we can go to this verse. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, fifth canto, fifth chapter, verse number 15, 5515. Five, nice verse. But it's, I mean, it's a general principle, but it speaks about guru. Here. So read the verse. Go, uh, go down to the to translation. Yeah. Shall I read it, Guru Maharaj? Yeah. 
if one is serious about going back home, back to Godhead, he must consider the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the summum bonum and chief aim of life. If he is a father instructing his sons, a spiritual master instructing his disciples, or a king instructing his citizens, he must instruct them as I have advised. Without being angry, he should continue giving instructions, even if his disciple, son, or citizen is sometimes unable to follow his order. Ignorant people who engage in pious and impious activities should be engaged in devotional service by all means. They should always avoid fruitive activity. If one puts into the bondage of karmic activity his disciple, son or citizen who is bereft of transcendental vision, how will one profit? It is like leading a blind man to a dark well and causing him to fall in. So yeah, so it says here one should one should instruct them without becoming angry, even if they're unable to follow. So you see all, all categories. When it says father instructing sons, it also means mother, and it also refers it refers to ones who, who's in a position of giving instructions or guidance to others. Mm -hmm. Yes, good match. Mm -hmm. Nice verse. Yes, good match. That's one I always have to remember. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Gurmaraj. I'll send the reminders from tomorrow onwards. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, about the reminder. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll do my best. I'll be here. And somehow or other, if you keep contacting, uh, Nittai Nataraj, he, he runs up with his phone and says, Maharaj, you're late. <laughs> That's what, that, was, that was me, Guru Maharaj. Okay. <laughs> yeah, once I get back into the, into, into the pattern again, I'll, I'll remember. It's just getting back into the pattern. I'll tell you my uh, I'm good this whole week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, I, I'm not sure if I'm good or not, but let's see. Um, Gurmaraj, can you please lower your screen a little bit, Gurmaraj? Thank you. Thank you so much for your answer, Gurmaraj. Thank you so much. It helps. Thank you. You can continue if there's more questions. Yes, Gurmaraj. Swaha Mataji raised her hand. Uh, Mataji, you can go ahead. Turn on your camera. Yeah. Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances for glories to Shura Prabhupada. Um, uh, I want to ask one question which might fall in the category of Vaishnava etiquette. So uh, we recently started to do sanghas at our home and we inviting speakers to give a classes and this morning we had a discussion with her husband what is the best way to to do this service um, or to ask them to give a class on specific topic and leave an option to choose their own topic or or just don't suggest any topic and leave them decide what on what topic they want to speak as most of them they they are senior devotees so we don't want to be offensive and uh, um or demanding and to deal nicely so could you advise us how to do well, I, it better i can only i can only say what how I deal with this. When someone asks me to give a class, I usually ask for them to give me a subject. Uh, unless I have a particular subject I really want to talk about. So uh, you don't really have to say anything. Let them give the class. But if they do request you or your husband to give me a subject, then you should, you should think. 
what would be the subject that would be beneficial to the group that he's talking to. But generally, if they don't ask, then they'll give they'll give a class accordingly. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Thank you very much, Gurudev, for your advice. We will follow it. Thank you. Very yeah, much. It's simple. Mm -hmm. What is any more questions or comments or realizations? Guru Maharaj, it's Srimati's birthday today, Guru Maharaj. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. She's all decked up. <laughs> October 3rd. Nice. Congratulations. We uh, we wish you a best wishes on this day and we hope that Krishna will bestow his mercy in a very sweet way. Uh, we'd like to remember the devotee on this day as a way to honor the devotee. Birthdays are one of the wonderful ways by which we remember the devotees and honor the devotees. So uh, <clears throat> we don't, we generally say that every day you should be happy in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Some day they say happy birthday, but we say happy every day. <laughs> because every day is meant to serve Krishna and therefore devotee is always feeling happy. Or that's the mood of devotional service. It's, it brings happiness. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we can also think what can I do or what can I uh, promise on my birthday that I'll, that I'll add to my devotional service? That's always nice. Looking for occasions mm -hmm. for opportunities to, to uh, you know, move forward in our Krishna consciousness. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Krishna has already blessed me with the uh, um, very wonderful spiritual master and uh, um, and this year is very special for me because I got initiated and such a beautiful name you gave me and I'm so blessed Guru Maharaj and uh, blessed with the whole I couldn't wait I couldn't wait to give you that name I was thinking boy this is the best name and I wasn't going to change no matter what <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Guru Maharaj and uh, giving me such a wonderful God family who always encourages me and blesses me. Thank you so much, dear devotees. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, best wishes on your birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance. So, uh, Guru Maharaj, I think uh, there are no more questions. Uh, Okay, that gives you more time to celebrate your birthday. <laughs> uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, did you bake her a cake? Uh, not yet, Guru Maharaj. First, we are planning to go and take darshan of Radha Kalachanji. So, as soon as the class is over, we're gonna. That's a nice way to celebrate the birthday. That's the temple before the curtains are down by twelve o'clock. So, good, good, good. I can't wait. I've never seen Radhakala Chaji in person. It's amazing. So I'm looking forward to that day when I can get there. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. We are also, we are also looking for her. Uh, Mataji has raised her hand. Uh, can we take a question, Guru Maharaj? Sudha Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Is it okay, uh, Guru Maharaj, if I can ask a question? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. 
Hare Krishna, Dhanu Pranam. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shilap Prabhupada, our glorious Shri Guru Maharaj. Thank you thank for you. the nice gifts that you gave me. Oh, no, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for your association and giving opportunity to this fallen soul to serve you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Guru Maharaj, thank you for the very nice class. My question today is about like, you know, um, enviousness and jealousy. Um, so being envious is like, uh, Guru Maharaj, you mentioned like you're not happy when someone is progressing and you're very dissatisfied. And jealousy is like towards oneself. Like um, when you see someone like more qualified, you get the feeling like I'm unqualified. So could you please explain more about like jealousy, Guru Maharaj? I couldn't understand this. Like um, It's um, similar, very similar, but you feel mm -hmm. bad about yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, you, well, they're better than me and I'm no good. And, you know, in other words, mm -hmm. it's envy still, but it's, it has a certain element of being directed towards oneself as, as opposed to being directed outward. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. The cause is the situation and how you see it is either jealousy or envy. And jealousy is practically the same as envy, but it's more focused on one's own unhappiness about themselves for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, sorry, Gurmash, if I can understand it, like uh, most of the time we have those feelings, like uh, uh, like when we see someone like more qualified or someone has like more skills, uh, we get the feelings, okay, I don't have those skills, I'm very unqualified. But we don't have like um, feelings that, you know, okay, we are not, we are happy for them, but still we have feelings like, you know, um, putting ourselves down. So, so those are more like a jealousy. Well, yeah, you should think, well, if someone has good qualities and if someone is doing things that are, are recognizable as being good, beneficial, like mm -hmm. that, you should also think, well, let me increase. We should be motivated to try to learn from someone who is in a in, who is in a good position that inspires us to increase our qualities, our activities, our devotion. Instead of thinking bad about myself, why not and try to improve myself? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Yes. Very much. Yes. So, because sometimes like we have those feelings parallelly running, like uh, we it's a also. Non, it's a non competitive way of doing things. The competitive mm -hmm. way is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch up to them so I can beat them or be as good as them. The other way is I want to do more in order to prove my, my relationship with Krishna. I want to prove my, I want to increase good, the qualities that I need. Mm -hmm. for devotional service. Okay. You have to understand a lot of it's based on motivation. Okay. Yes. So, um, so Guru Maharaj, we have those feelings like, okay, when I see a person, okay, I want to improve, but also we have those feelings like partly running, okay, I'm not qualified, but also have like intention, like, you know, to learn and become a better devotee like them. So how can we leave these feelings like, you know, the unqualified things out and work just towards like, you know. Why do we have to worry about being qualified? Just be devotional, that's all. <laughs> if, you're devo if, you're, if you're trying to love Krishna, that's the best quality. Okay, so we have overcome completely. There are, you know, what, what was, uh, what was uh, uh, Kolovetcher Sridhar's qualification? I mean, he, he had clothes with holes in it, and he had a house with mm -hmm. holes in it. He, he, he was so poor. But still, Lord Chaitanya, you know, mm -hmm. glorified his devotion as being the best. Mm -hmm. It was his devotion that made him glorious, not so much of what he had or what skills he had or this. These are all, you know, extra. Yes, yes. 
if you take a skillful materialistic person and you take a devotee who has no skills, we'll take a devotee who has no skills because their hearts are in the right place. Yes, Gurmash. Yes. Yes, thank you so much, Gurmash. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, as you said, Gurmash, it's a material world. Sometimes, even though we don't want to carry those feelings, uh, but when you're in association, uh, we get those feelings. So uh, pay, pay attention to them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, gosh, yes, yes. Every yes. feeling that comes doesn't mean it's correct or right. You know, I, I'm standing on top of a building and I'm, I feel like I should jump off. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> Feelings have come and go. Intelligence is what is the guiding factor. Yes, yes, good much. Thank you. Thank you so much, good much, for your association. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about your feelings so much. Just worry about how to serve nicely and how to increase your devotion to Krishna. That's all. Yes. Focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru, definitely. Yeah, I will try. Your mercy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you all. So we'll sign off here and we'll see you all tomorrow. I hope I don't have to be reminded. <laughs> I'll try to be here on time. <laughs> I guess I should write it down so I don't forget it. Uh, for tomorrow, I'll send a reminder, Guru Maharaj, in the morning. Maybe so I you, you can send a reminder. Yes, I come here. Yes, thank you. Nithai Nataraj is my reminder. Yeah. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, are you giving another class in the evening in Chicago Temple today at 5 p.m.? Today, today, I'm giving the Sunday feast lecture at the Chicago Temple. So that's at 5 p.m. Chicago time. Mm, 5.30. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. In the middle of the night for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'll share the YouTube link, Mataji. If, it'll you be can't, if you can't sleep, just come on, on my lecture, and then you just listen to my lecture, and you'll, it'll put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, Guru Maharaj. In fact, your lectures wake me up. Yes. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll see you all. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna.